Welcome to Uptown Rumble, heavy music in the Bronx. My name is Stephen Payne, director of the Bronx County Historical Society. Today is April 6th, 2024, and we're here for an oral history with Blackout. And uh, can't wait to hear about um, uh, all of the histories that the members have to share. But first, let's hear just a little bit about yourselves. Name, position you held in Blackout, any other bands you want to mention. Um, uh, Will, let's start with you, then we'll move this way. Uh, my name is Will Gomez. I was the lead singer and bassist for Blackout from the South Bronx. What other bands I play? Uh, Rights Reserve was after that. Giant Cages of Fate. Uh huh. Um, there was a rock band too. I was inside. Oh, you're inside. Yeah, that's right. Um, what else? <clears throat> then Tiger Flowers, and now Lost Becomes. Wow. Well, thank you, Will. Uh, Henry? Hi, my name is Henry Feliciano. I'm a drummer for Blackout. That's the only band I played for, and hopefully we can continue. Original G. <laughs> thank you, Henry. Hopefully. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Gary Cotto. I am the, uh, the well, was the uh, uh, rhythm guitarist uh, for Blackout. Rhythm and lead. Rhythm and lead. Rhythm and lead. Yeah, yeah. Um, Great playing with Blackout during that period of time. I'm, I'm really anxious and, and interested in going down that memory. Great. Well, thank you all for being here. Now, we're going to start off in a, a little bit of a different way than usual because just finished uh, an oral history with uh, uh, the the Vibs father and son duo. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Muttley, um, and, and Phil and Muttley are going to weigh in here on, on Blackout before we get into things with, uh, um, with the members of Blackout. So I'm going to rotate the camera here. All right. Uh, whichever of you all wants to go first, Phil. All right. Uh, so Phil Vibes, I rate. Uh, uh, I was going to say Blackout. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I read and also uh, I read. Knights of the Black and the Judas Syndrome. Um, I'm here today not only for our stuff, but to really highlight a, a truly important band to the Bronx and a band that I not only looked up to, but respected uh, a great deal to this day. I thought they were ahead of their time writing like thrash, but hardcore, but all the good shit that the Bronx had going on, they were a, a good melting pot of that. And I couldn't, I couldn't go away today without saying how much love I have for these three guys and respect and admiration. And the fact that we're still together all fucking 30 years later, still brothers, still family. I see this guy as, as often as I can. Um, it's very special to me. And I can't wait to hear their history just go back down memory lane and, and hear things that maybe I never knew about them yeah. uh, and things I did know about them. And I'm really stoked for this one. Like this, this is going to be one of my favorite ones because of the respect that I have for these guys. And um, aside from Will booking us as Iraq, <laughs> you know, we had a great relationship and, um, you know, that continues to flourish. <laughs> One of the coolest stories ever, and, and I'll let him tell that story, but um, truly an honor to, to sit here all these years later and, and see them shine again. Uh, they deserve it, and I couldn't be happier for them as their brother right now. So God bless you guys, I love you guys, and I'll always be a champion for this fucking band. Thank you Thank you, Phil. How am I going to follow up Iraq? Uh, Blackout is one of the most slept on bands out of our scene. Uh, and, and it's a special thing when people recognize it just because it was before the days of the internet, before the days of Spotify or any of that shit. Uh, so there's a lot of homework that has to be done for you to really know about Blackout. And hopefully we'll change that because we were talking before about trying to find a way to get that stuff online somehow. Um, but they deserve to get their history out there and to have more people know about what they were doing because they were ahead of their time, like Phil said. 
uh, doing things back in the 90s that still haven't been matched. So I'm glad to see them get their due. And there's a lot of history just here at this table right now. Yeah. And, and we're proud to tell our story and to hear them tell their story and to get the recognition that they deserve. Great. Okay, so um, Henry, do you want to start off by talking a little bit about your family history and background and how your family ended up in the Bronx? Yes, my mom moved here from Puerto Rico when she was uh, 17. My father lives here already, he's born in the hospital. Yeah. And uh, they met up, they had me. It was at like 136 and St. Anne's. Okay. First, and then we moved to Castle Hill. And that's why I grew up. I see, I see, I see. And um, did your mom or dad talk much with you uh, ever about you know, what things were like when they first got to the Bronx, or your dad was already in the Bronx, of course, but right. do you know much about, like, before they got together and had you or anything? Not really. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was just living life. Yeah. Do you know why your mom, um, or how your mom ended up in the Bronx specifically? Were there family or no, the one? She was visiting. She went with my dad. And it just sucked up. Stayed together for a little bit. Yeah. Separated. I see. I see. And and you have uh, very many memories from when you were living on 136 in St. Anne's? No, not at all. Not at all, huh? Very little. Very little. Yeah. How old were you when, about how old were you when your family moved to Castle Hill? I think about four or five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I grew up. Yeah. And where um, in Castle Hill did you live? What intersection? Coleman uh, Avenue, Castle Hill. Okay, yeah. So at the end of Castle Hill. I see, I see, I see. And what are some of your earliest memories in that neighborhood? Uh, just playing with my friends. Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> you saw Jenny on the block? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> playing my friends. <laughs> Football, baseball, there's no video games. Yeah. Not as much. Just having fun with yeah, yeah. What 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 kinds? Of, you, you you mentioned football and baseball. Are, are there like street games that you all play too? Would you all yeah, like tag tag something called manhunt? Manhunt. Yep. Hi. No, I forgot about that. That's uh, that shit got violent sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, but, um, just, uh, and it was fun. Yeah. You know, music, streets. What kind of music would you hear in the street? Rap. Uh -huh. Rock. Not too much. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Spanish music. Yeah. What were some of the big um, hip hop songs wow. that you remember at the Never time? Uh huh. Garrus Wan. Bismarcky. Yep. Big Daddy Kane. P and E. Uh huh. So, Public Enemy. Public Enemy, yeah. Public Enemy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Run DMC. Run DMC for sure. I'm on a classic. I was like, I don't know, metal. Yeah, sure, sure. It was like rock. Kiss me. Yeah. That was it, yeah. Um, and what kind of building did your family live in? In Castle Hill, was it like a five-floor walk-up? Was it a big tower? Was it a house? Like, what what kind of building was it? Projects. Projects. Got it. Eleventh yep. floor. Eleventh floor. Yeah. And did was your family or were you close with like other folks in the projects? Yes. Yeah. Friends. Yeah. Like, and, and what were they like? Like, you know, what kinds of things would you do together with? Sometimes other people watch there? TV, you know, watch movies. Play outside, basketball. Yeah. Uh, no video games. Sure. At that time. Sure. Until we got the Atari, Coleco Vision. Wow. Wow. I have a Coleco. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we just play at the same time they'd be home. Yep. My mom's very strict. Be home by seven or eight. 
and would other uh, adults in the project uh, rat on you if you, uh, you know, if you did anything? <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'd get back to your mom before yes. you got home. Yes. That kind of thing. <laughs> I saw him doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> um, did you have brothers and sisters? Yes. Yeah. How how many? I have a younger brother. Younger brother. Okay. 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 I see. Yeah. Um, and what elementary school did you go to? St. John Vianney. Oh, okay, okay. Where's that at? That's like Seward Avenue. Okay, okay, SEO. okay. I see, I see. Is that a Catholic, Catholic school? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started in a public school and then transferred to second grade. I see, I see. And, and what public school did you go to? 136. Okay, okay. Story Avenue? On Story Avenue, yeah, 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 that's right. It's 138. I forget. Yeah. Um, and what what was the experience like in, you know, public school, elementary school versus the Catholic school? <laughs> Catholic school is, I guess, more strict. Yeah. You don't do as much. Yeah. You don't pay for it, too. Physically, right? Right, physically. Yep. School, Saint Raymond's High School. Oh, you went to Saint Raymond's. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. And what what was Saint Raymond's like? It's an old boys school. So. <laughs> <laughs> there was a girl school two blocks away, and then boys school. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, and as far as, uh, like, you mentioned music on the street already, but what about music in your household? What kinds of music did your, your parents listen to or, or other people, maybe other adults you were around? What kind of music did you also hear? Like R&B, yeah. Hispanic music, freestyle started coming out. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, and... Were you yourself like getting into music at this time? Like, how did you yes. get into music? Yeah, music yeah, yeah. yeah. So you were really yeah, into yeah. hip hop, right? Yeah. Um, and would you go to like, um, were there jams going on at, at that time still, like in community centers or things like that? Yes. As far as yeah, it was. okay, yeah. Which ones would you go to? Like, where would you go? Was, uh, community center, like two blocks away. Yeah. There were a lot of other events there. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Basketball games that had music. Yeah. Do you remember, um, like, the first, uh, uh, I guess, concert or show you went to? Was it a hip hop um, show? I never went to any shows. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was too young. Yeah, you're too young. Yeah. I'm so strict. You're not going over there. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, she was already, you know, strict. Did you have other family, like on your dad's side, that lived in the Bronx, or any other family that you yes. all would visit? Yeah. yeah. Brother, sister. Okay. Okay. Where did they live in the Bronx? Uh, one lived in um, the Bronx Park East. Okay. With, uh, Allerton. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, my uncle lived in. Uh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. I see. He was more spot. Okay. I see. Actually, Allison Avenue. On Allison Avenue too. Okay. I see. I see. And as far as the the Castle Hill projects went, like. What were they like at the time you were growing up? Like, um, you know, what kind of people do you remember living there? Like, what was the environment like there? Like, the general vibes of the Castle Hill projects. Well, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people worked for the most part. Yeah. A lot of people were, you know, selling drugs and sure. just trying to make it, make it by. Yeah. People going to school. It wasn't that bad. Sure. You know, a lot of people just playing, 
lot of people on the street playing music. Cars sometimes have a lot of music. Sure. You know, we have a lot of you know, uh, speakers, yeah. Jeeps. They're on the block. I'm playing music. Yeah. It was pretty. Yeah. Did you have a big speaker in your car? One time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they sold for me. <laughs> and it was a bomb. Is that a truck? Can you hear me? Wow. Well, um, were were there a lot of other Puerto Rican families in the Castle yes. Projects at that time? Yeah, because like even maybe twenty years before that, I know a lot of people in the Castle Hill and and some of the, sometimes the Soundview Projects, sometimes like uh, Bronxdale houses. Right. Like they, if they left the project, sometimes they faced a lot of like you know basically angry white mobs. But yes. I think probably by the time you're growing up, yeah, I don't really see the, that too. The demographics had shifted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but did you run into any of that? Were there any neighborhoods that you were like dangerous for you to go into or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. Probably yeah. yeah. didn't see me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know that guy. What's he doing here? Yep. That's how it was. We were more yeah. territorial you know, disputes. That's right. Uh, I didn't really come across that that much. Sure. Sure. Um, I just went to school, went home, played, and go right home. Yep. I didn't really hang out that much. Yeah. Some of my friends used to do that. You know, the drug, the drink. Sure. Uh, I stayed on my path. Yeah. Straight path. And your mom made sure that you yes. did, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Now, how did you first start getting into heavy music? I was a Joe, uh, Joe Torres got me into that. Okay. He's a uh, you know, friend of the area. He was riding a bike one day, the White Stone movies. Okay, he was yeah. He yeah. his bike. And I was riding in my car and I said, Oh, nice bike. I said, Oh, thanks. And he thought I was going to rob him. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, he said, he said, This guy's going to rob him. We just met through there. Through there. Riding bikes. That's funny. And, you know, Gary used to like skateboard. Uh huh. With his friends. He was a very heavy, you know, he liked heavy rock a lot, Joe. Yeah. So he was playing Metallica all the time in his house. I just started liking it. Yeah. That was it. Hip hop was kind of going the other way. I was listening to Mel more, more and more. I see. Did you start? Did you start like dressing the port at all, like band shirts or anything like that? Did you ever have a face like that? I'm sure your mom would have killed you if you did, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we always dressed very well. And like, yep. This guy's played metal. Yeah. We know him dressed like that. Yeah, that's right. Off. Yep. <laughs> right. And and no long hair. You never yeah. tried that. Anything like that? Yeah. Huh? yeah. Um, do you remember, uh, the first, I guess, metal album that you either bought or, you know, got a copy of from someone? Yeah, uh, I think it was Master of Puppets. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Metallica, yeah. Some, I think, Megadeth. Yeah. So far, so good, so far. Yeah. So, Joe got me into all that. Wow. To this day, he's still into it. Wow. Yeah, me too. Um, were there... Did you start to meet other people besides Joe that were into this kind of music? Yeah. His brother. Yeah. I saw Matt Hill. We live in the same building. Uh huh. And then Gary O. He lived a block away. We started branching out. We were more for more. I see. And how, how old were you when you when you met Joe? Just so we have. I think about 17 or 18. Okay, about 17 or 18. Think, right? Well, well, you're you're 16, right? I hadn't even met you yet. No, I didn't even meet him. Yeah, kind of met him. Until after. Yeah. We were in France for a while, I think a year. Yeah. But you were still in high school when all this happened, I guess, right? Or you just finished high school? No, I think I was done with high school. You're done with high school, okay, so okay. I'm not, I'm not old. Like 18, 19? Yeah. yeah. Something like that, wow. I just finished high school. Wow. Um, 
Okay, so I we'll, we'll we'll continue on with your path in a second, but let's get to more or less the same point um, with you, Will. Uh, if you want to start by talking about your family history and background and how your family ended up in the Bronx. Uh, both parents were born in Puerto Rico, but a lot of our family was up here in New York, so they, they just, you know, Puerto Rico migrated to the Bronx pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Puerto Rico. yeah. sure. Um, uh, do you know where in Puerto Rico your parents are from? My mom was from Caguas. Okay. And my dad. Sorry, my dad was from. No, my mom was from Caguas. And. Where's Miguel Cotto from? <laughs> Who's that? Miguel Cotto. Oh. That's where like, my family's from. What's my dad's side. Uh, yeah. But. Um, Wait, that might be Caguas. That might be Caguas. I'm getting, I'm getting confused. By your mom. You can tell from the Bronx. Were they already um, together when they when they came no, to the Bronx? No, they met here. Oh, okay. Um, I think my dad met my aunt, and then I met my mom, and they started dating. They were probably around 20. Okay, okay. Do you know where in the Bronx they lived when they met? Not sure. Not sure? No. Yeah. My parents are telling their history. <laughs> I just know everybody lived in the Bronx. Yeah. <laughs> but most of my family's from Queens. My dad's side's family from Queens. So, uh, I was born in Queens. Oh, okay, okay, I see. You're born, oh, born in Queens. In wow. Okay. Okay. That's so. That's where your dad's family yeah. kind of settled, huh? So they were all over there. My dad's side. And then, I don't know if they maybe lived there for a while. But then my dad was a super superintendent, superintendent for a building in the Bronx. I mean, uh, in Manhattan. Okay. Okay. So you lived there for a while. Do that. And then he was also a doorman. So I think we lived. City. Okay. Yeah. So we were like the, wow. You know, the fancy Puerto Ricans. <laughs> 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 wow. Yeah, but my dad is from Cabo. That is from where we go. Cote was from. Sorry. <laughs> Space Nine. But, um, so grew up in Manhattan for a little bit. Yeah. And then my dad lost a job. Hmm. Migrate to the Bronx. My mom's side was in the Bronx already. We ended up living in a couple aunt's houses for a while. Then we met in Soundview. And that's pretty much. I see. <laughs> so, so, where in Soundview did you live? I lived on Stratford Avenue. And, uh, Stratford and 172nd. 172nd, yeah. 172nd. okay. <laughs> 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 um, and what what so back to Manhattan for a second do you have any memories from your time in Manhattan yeah yeah okay yeah, okay yeah yeah, yeah. Couple, you know, I think that maybe I was there up to like maybe the third grade oh okay okay, okay. so until yeah. you were I see so I lived there for a while like, we had like a, I mean I had like a really nice apartment yeah like my parents had like this high rise ceiling Wow. In the city. I mean, try to get an apartment now. Forget about it. It's like a million dollars. Yeah, I bet. Um, but yeah, I lived there for a while, but then he lost that job, so like, just had to go, go back to, to where all the other Puerto Ricans were. Yep. In the Bronx. <laughs> yep. Um, what, what are some of the things you remember uh, in addition to the apartment about your Manhattan years before we make our way up to the Bronx? Good times, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, my dad was doing really well. He had, he had like a, two cars. Wow. He had like those two jobs. He had like a, uh, he used to work a lot. Yeah. He had a condo in Florida or like one of those. Not a condo. What's the one that everybody's trying to get out of? Now? Oh, like a timeshare or a something. Time right? share. He had a timeshare oh, in Florida. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, 
guys said, it was nice. Everybody would want to come to our house, hang out at my house. Like, yeah. To visit. We were the only ones that had HBO. Back in those days. <laughs> wow. so, uh, they had a cable box and it was like a big brown uh-huh. box. So everybody came to the house. And, um, that's what they had HBO. Wow. And I had my own room. And I was like, I have my own room. It's like huge. Bigger than like some apartments now. Like, it was crazy. Wow. Yeah. And what what elementary school did you go to down there? Do you remember the name, the number? Uh, but in Manhattan Elementary, some in somewhere Manhattan. near um, thirty East, thirty East Street. Okay, okay. Do you do you remember much about like the students or teachers there? Yeah. Um, um, teachers were kind of mean. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I used to run around. And not listen, and they, back then they do whatever they wanted. Uh huh. Pinch your ear. Yeah. And like, mm-hmm. this one teacher pinched my ear so hard I pissed myself. Oh, oh damn. God. Yeah, and then, and, wow. and then it was, it, it, it was recess. It was like, and then after that I was like, all right, I might go to recess. And I'm there standing, like, damn, I pissed myself. So damn. we all went outside. It was a real sunny day. Like all the kids are playing. I'm standing there like this. <laughs> trying to dry yeah, off. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm drying off. <laughs> I'm standing here, dead in the sun. I always tell people that story. That's a true story. Damn. Uh, like the other kids are like, even going crazy or something. Remember these kids would try and go down these stairs and one of those like milk crates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those little girls oh like that. Tom, like, oh my god. I'm over here drying myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, wow. Um, so when you moved up to the Bronx and into the Soundview area, um, what are some of the you know earliest memories you have from Soundview? Dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> what kinds of things like would you see it was or whatever? Wild, you know? Yeah. Like, you'd have to be inside at a certain time. Um, I don't know. Remember this guy, but like they used to do like turf wars, you know, like this side of the street, yep. by this side of the street. So I remember like my mom, like we would just be those typical Puerto Ricans, like oh, the, the, the shades, like <laughs> looking, yeah. Spies, fighting, yeah. And grown ups, and it was wild. Like, but to me, it was normal. Right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's Friday, gotta go outside before seven o'clock. The turf wars about to start. And it, it was it was crews, right? It's not like there were gangs or anything. It was just the neighborhood crew, right? Then uh, as I got older, I think it got worse. So I didn't see, but I was there when this guy got shot with a shotgun. Damn. Right on Stratford. But like, it's a couple buildings down. And my brother and I were like, what the hell was that noise? And we went outside, everybody was just gathering. And there's this guy just laying between a car and the sidewalk. Wow. You pull him out and he's, he's gone. Damn. That's, that's the stuff me and my brother saw when we were growing up. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, Crazy stuff. So, Henry talked a little bit about, um, you know, things that he would do for fun around the neighborhood. Obviously, there's there's danger that you're seeing in the neighborhood. Yeah, Where there night, was there fun? The was yeah, right. like yeah, what like kinds like of you things would you do for fun? Music, hanging out. Yeah. Um, I wasn't much into sports. Yeah. I was kind of terrible at sports. Yeah. <laughs> terrible. Was, uh, <laughs> baseball, maybe. That was like the one thing I was actually kind of good at. Just, yeah. You know, just like swing or something. I was like, all right, do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <ball. laughs> So that was maybe the one thing that I was good at, but everything else I sucked. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, uh, and then I was like, I guess that's when I, I started kind of like liking music in like junior high school. I was like, I didn't want to play baseball. I didn't want, definitely want to play basketball. I'm short. Yeah. Like, I don't want to play basketball. And then started messing around with music a little bit. Oh, yeah? What, what? What was your first like introduction? Trumpet. Okay, trumpet. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. I think I signed up for music class. Sixth grade. I, I, I used to go home with a 
the trunk of it, you know, you see the little thing with the case, yep. the lumber written on the side, that was me. The trunk of it going home. What um, mi middle school or, uh, or junior high was that? Yeah, high school, that was 116. Okay, yeah, 116, uh, yep, yep, yep. Yep, and I got robbed to come home from 116. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. So this kid was like, hey, come here. <laughs> walking past Whitlock, oh, yeah, me and my yeah. friends, and we saw this kid like in the eye. I was like, I saw him. I was like, man, let's keep walking, guys. Let's keep walking. But somebody stopped, and I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> can't leave him. Yep. Uh, and then he was like, oh, I think I had just got this jean jacket. I think my dad bought me like a jean jacket with matching jean pants. Uh, <laughs> uh, to me, I was like, <laughs> the shit. <laughs> shit. I had a jean jacket with pants. He's like, man, that's nice. That's a nice jacket. I'm gonna try it on. <laughs> you um, know where that's going. Like, oh, man, this is nice, man. And he's like, starts talking. Next thing you know, all I remember is like him running with my my nice jean jacket. He's like, ah, this is jean jacket. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Damn. And I walked home on the other side of the block. <laughs> from that point on. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Um, so when you, you know, started playing trumpet and, and band and all, were you getting into like um, listening to music much on your own as well at that point? Yeah, like like Henry said, a lot of hip hop. Yeah. But for me, it was, you know, I was later on, I was like more Cypress Hill. Ah, I see, I see. So like, Lugus, I more, see. Like, you know, stuff like that. And then, and then um, David, which is Joe's brother. Ah, I he, see, I see. He used to live on the fourth floor, and uh, it's just you get the sound coming out the window. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> fucking <laughs> David guitar, right? playing guitar, like riffs. I'm like, man, he's like, it was like standing there, like, what the fuck is that? That sounds fucking cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then whatever, I guess I'll keep playing. <laughs> outside and then, yeah. then they would come down and hang out and just like he like just talk to like he was he talked to the young kids like hey what's up man just you know and then he would, I would go up to him like what are you doing up there? Like, that was you? Like what was that? I said yeah I'm playing this song. I was like man this sounds good. And then I just started like latching on and like, I was like you gonna go play guitar today? He's like yeah, I was like, yeah. And then next thing you know I was in his house watching him play guitar, and then I was like, man, I told my dad, I was like, well, they, him and Joe were playing guitar together, like, doing covers, like, yeah. covers, like, Pantera, right? Pantera, Metallica, Metallica, Sepultura. That's what, like, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and I heard that, I was like, okay, I jaw dropped, and I was like, what the fuck is that? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Cries, and he like, yeah. uh, oh, God. And I was like, oh, man. Yeah, you know, Creator. Uh, oh, creator too. Yep. Yep. So I, you know, yep. I told my dad, I was like, Dad, well, there was two guitar players, and I was like, he was like, well, you want you can play bass? And I was like, what the fuck is bass? <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, I told my dad, I was like, Dad, man, I want a bass guitar. And my dad's like, I mean, what the fuck is bass? <laughs> <laughs> You know, the guitar. <laughs> so we went, my dad took me to Castle Hill Music. Uh-huh. Uh and I bought, we bought the cheapest bass we could find. It was like a starter bass. And I don't even, I don't, it didn't even have 24 frets. It had like 12 frets. Or something. <laughs> well, I was like, I yeah, yeah, a mini one, yeah. And I was like, I don't care. I want it. Yeah. yeah. And I bought it. And then, so he bought it. And then we started playing bass. I started learning, like, simple stuff. I think it was like, Nirvana was like the first. Sure. Oh, yeah. Sure. The Nirvana songs, The Cure. I was telling my friends today. The Cure, um, the bass lines like that. I was like, oh, I'm going to learn how to do that. And then slowly graduated to just want to play metal. And yes. Play metal yeah. all the time. And that's how that, that started with, with, uh, with David. For me, it was David. For him, it was Joe. And I he, see. You know, yeah. And did, did David and Joe, did they end up playing in um, a band or bands over they the years? Were, 
original Man. guitar. Like, they were the original Blackout. Oh, okay, okay. They were the original Blackout. I see, I see, I see, I see. We used to hang out with Gary all the time. These guys were all older than me. Yeah. So I was like, just like the kid, you know, tagging along. Right. With my bass, my little bass. Then I ended up buying money to buy another bass. Yeah. Like a real bass. It was a nice looking bass. That was the owner, yeah. Okay. Uh, also a Castle Hill music? Also Castle Hill music. I went back, I was like, I need another bass, man. It was so big kid bass. <laughs> <laughs> I need another bass. I need bass now. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm still playing. You know, most kids, they pick up instruments. They're like, ah, this is cool. <laughs> they never play it again. But I kept going. Now, do you remember the first, um, uh, like, metal album that you bought or got a, you know, copy of? Oh, man. I remember buying my daughter at Castle Hill, at another music store at Castle Hill, and the CD. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got a, I got a, I got a guy oh, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think I that's their like first album. Being like, I remember it being in the metal section. I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. I'm going to do that. I know like some of those guys now. That's crazy. Um, but, uh, yeah, and then honestly, like Sepultura, man, it sucked me in. Like, yeah, just yeah. listening to that, I was like, wow. I just wanted to do everything they were doing. I was like, I want to play that. I want to sound like that. Yes. I want to scream like that. <laughs> uh huh. And then, you know, that's me. But I can't jump ahead of myself because these guys. Gary and David and you, I, I guess, I mean, there's pictures of me where I'm like playing with them. Joe was originally a singer, right? Yes. Wasn't Joe the singer? No. Rhythm and vocals. Okay, rhythm and vocals. Yeah. Dave was lead. Dave was lead. And I was just playing bass. Right. And then, I, but I did write some, you know, I was writing with them. But I, I don't remember how many songs we wrote. Just the one? Was it Black Eyed? I mean, was it on the trail? World of Lies. World of Lies? World of Lies. I'm not sure if he was able to play it later. Yeah. But um, they, those guys were like the original founding members. Yeah. The founding members. Okay. And Joe was singing. And then, right. You know, one day Joe was like, I'm moving. And we're like, what? We got a show coming up. <laughs> what about the band? <laughs> like, nah, I'm leaving. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, he went to Florida. And then, I mean, that life happens. Yeah, people, sure. Right. Sure. He, he, they were, like I said, they were older than me, so they, they had real life decisions to make. I was just like, why am I still in high school? Yeah, yeah. you're still pretty young. Yeah. I was 14 yeah. when I picked up my bass. Wow. Know, the first time. 13, 14 years old. Wow. So by the time. By the time we start playing shows, I was maybe 17, 16, something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was pretty I young. was so young. Wow. I had a fake ID. <laughs> Times Square. <laughs> <laughs> to get into the bar, <laughs> to play, <laughs> play and work. <laughs> and like, I think my name was, on the ID, my name was Jose Fria. Where I came from, his name, I don't know. <laughs> Wow. Wow. We've been looking for Mr. F uh, Frias for a long time. Now we know where he is. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> do, do you remember the first um, concert that you went to? What were were you the? What was your first concert one that you were playing in, or or did you go to one before that? Um, first concert was yeah, probably the one that we played. Um, it had to be like yeah, Malawi Park. Okay. Hey. You you were at the Malali show, right? Us. Granite Coffee One, District Nine. Uh huh. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, Northern Social Valley, maybe. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that was the first, like, anything show. Wow. I just, like, I didn't know much about the scene. Sure. I didn't know much about any other bands. Like, I was just like, all I knew was these guys. Yeah. And, you know, these guys, Gary and David left. Me and him were like, what the hell are we going to do? So we're in the basement. Whose house was that? Was your house? No. Sergio's house. Who's that? 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 Who's Vocalist, Will. I was like, I don't know. He's like, why don't you just use that microphone? And I was like, all right. <laughs> and it just happened. I was like, oh, I can do this. And we just did it over and over again. And I remember we were hanging out with Gary. And he was like, Gary, I'll just play guitar. But you guys, and then these guys did a show, like that college show. Remember? You guys yes. did, like, we did a talent show. Talent show. Oh. Talent show in college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, at LaGuardia Community College. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that was before Malali. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. That was before Malali then, huh? That was before, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was before Malali. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, that was before Maybe not, okay. Maybe it was before that. The talent show, I think, came after possibly the Wow, okay. Wow. Very possible. Um, so, uh, you mentioned Casa Home Music as like, you know, the local spot where you go to, to get your instruments. Um, and there is a record store you went to in Casa Home. Do you remember the name of that? Okay. Were there other like stores either in the Bronx or Manhattan that you go to like for instruments or albums? Uh, The usual back then was like. Sam Ash. Oh, Sam Ash for sure. Or Guitar Center was all good with Sam yep. Ash. Nannies. Yeah, that's when like, uh, 40 on the That's when you yeah. just go there and hang out. Look yep. at the bass player. You know, I used to look at bass players. And, you know, like, you know, like, doing their thing. One time I saw this guy slapping the bass. This is way <laughs> after, I think after Blackout. So this guy just, you know, I was like, man, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I asked him, I was like, How, what is this? He's like, I'm just playing slot bass. And he showed me, he's like, doing it. I was like, oh, it's cool. Do it again. Do it again. I was like, all right, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> go back. I, I never picked up the pick again. I was like, oh, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> so I just learned by myself, just, you know, playing, that, playing slot bass. So wow, wow. Well, um, now, we're going to continue a lot more with Blackout in a second. And Gary, we're going to go back to you in a second, too. But just a, a couple of questions to bring um, Henry uh, up to this, um, since Will got into this as well. Um, Henry, when did you first start, it, uh, start playing music? And how did that happen? Well, we looked at the studio, yeah. the session, you know, low, and I think it played. He was playing the drums and he said, try it. And I said, all right, who was playing drums? Joe. Joe was Joe playing, playing drums, okay. He played in high school for a little bit. And, and they had the drum kit at the studio, yes. so it's not like you oh, had like to have one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what, what rehearsal studio was it, do you remember? Yeah. Was it in the Bronx? No. Oh, okay, okay, it was in Manhattan. It was Midtown. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Oh, I think we're the old fucking Dulles. Yeah, I think it was there. Okay, uh, yeah. That's kind of like how the name came about. My book did. He said, what's the name? I said, huh? <laughs> we had no name. Yeah. So I said, Blackout. And we just kind of stuck with it. Wow. It was just on, it, on your... Phone. Oh, I see, I see, I see. That studio. Wow. Was it you that came up with it? Yeah. I, thought it, I always thought it was me. And just off the top of your head, right? <laughs> Maybe it's all me. <laughs> I just remember being like, being like drunk. <laughs> Where I should have been drunk, but you don't have to be drinking. <laughs> he, he made it. <laughs> yeah, he made it up just now. Yeah. Sure. Joe said, book a 
the studio. And we went to the studio, and I couldn't play drums for anything. Yeah. My man kept jumping. Joe's like, stop, man. Yeah. Stop with your legs. <laughs> <laughs> <You're like, "Damn." laughs> and after that, I started practicing on my steering wheel. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So my two right. sticks, and that's how I learned. Wow. On my own. Wow. At at what point did you um you get like a drum kit? I think after that. After that, did you? We went to one of his friends' house, the Bronx. You know, Louis Louis Perez. Uh, we went to one of his friends' uh, building. Yeah. His friend had a drum set. And they were like they were playing the whole day. We already played. Yeah. So Joe says, "Can we get on?" Yeah. I said, All right. And I started playing. He goes, "You got it." Yeah. And that's how I started playing. Wow. And I said, I'm getting my own drum set. <laughs> and I think I got it at the same place. Castle, Castle Hill. Hill. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you'll get yeah. all our money. Oh, okay. Yeah. Supporting Castle Hill music is getting a lot of love here. It is. It is. <laughs> Bro- Bronin gets a lot of love yes. from the other side of the Bronx. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep, on I Webster. I was from much later. Yeah. Oh, what's his name work? Uh, Joe, Joe Frank, Rampage, Frank, 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 and also, Frank, um, Frank uh, Loki from District Loki, Nine, yes. yeah, 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 worked there too. Wow. Yeah, wow. yeah. Um, but yeah, Castle Hill. It makes sense because yeah. y'all, y'all, it's that's right there for y'all. For yeah. That's a, that's a local area. Yep. And my ex girlfriend had a house in St. Lawrence, and I bought the drum set and I put it there. Oh, I see. Amazing? Yeah, I was that was so that's where you, y'all would rehearse sometimes, yes. huh? That's how yeah. y'all Oh, okay. That's where it all started. Is that that com- big combo amp? It was heavy as a motherfucker. Drag it out to the basement. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we started. I it was, see. It's probably still in that basement. That's <laughs> 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 some goddamn heavy. And then uh, we had a show with uh, Malala. We bought it. it was the first show. Joe had just left to Florida. I see. And he called me Eric. Yeah. He started the person was in the basement. I see. What what year was that with the Malali show? Was that 94, 95? That's 96. Oh, 96. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, um, that's a good question. Uh, I'm trying to rack my brain. Forgive me for not remembering exactly. Oh, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I'm sure there's a flyer. I know there's no a flyer. Yeah. I would have to find that so flyer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I was 16. I, I was young. You don't have that flag, right? Young. Uh, I might be in some photos somewhere. Yeah. Uh, very I've, I've seen it before it's like a somewhere. It's a green. It's like a cardboard or something. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, Will, what year were you born? Just so 79. we can. 79. Okay, so I guess it'd have to be. So what's what, that? 90. Yeah. It was 96. 89. I don't know. It, 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 99 or 20. Yeah. Maybe 97? 96, 96, 96 maybe. I want to say 96, 97. I was already... Yeah. Well, no, no, it's fine. And there, there, were, there were a few years of Malali shows. I was I always deal with the dates. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Phil says it might have been 95 and then. I think it. I think so. Maybe I know. Sick of it all played. I think in '96. So at, the, it, it, at Malali. So we played before that. Y'all we played, played before summer, that. We played the summer before that. Or was yeah. that the, must have been. Before that. So yeah. Been yeah. 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 Must have yeah. been '95. Yeah. Because the video from Antonio yeah. is from '97. We played there for it. Yeah. No, 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 shoes. Shoes. <laughs> no, 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 Yeah. Wow. Wow. We played first, right? Yeah, everybody? We played first. Like, we, we, opened, we opened up. We were nervous. Nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was, I was nervous going in, so I was like, this is going to be amazing. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, everything's great. And I'm standing there, and all of a sudden I see a, like, a wave of people, and I'm like, <laughs> uh, guys, just like guys playing like the intro riffs, yep, yep. and then like we're just like, deep. I think these guys are like waiting for me, and I'm literally, literally like the like the, the, the frogs, right? 
the scariest 30 seconds of my life. Right? I was like, <laughs> looking at him, what to do, what to say, and then I'm like, I kind of talked myself out, but I was like, all right, well, do it. And then I just started, I don't know, screaming. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fucking blackout. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Wow. Like, I was scared to death. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. For our first show, that's... That's yeah. an amazing first show. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so Gary, why don't we uh, we go back um, at the beginning of your life, and then we'll work our way up, and then we'll continue on with Blackout. So, um, whatever you know about your family history and background, and how they ended up in the Bronx. Sure. Um, well, as far as dates concerned, I don't really know exactly when sure. these, these things happen, but I can guesstimate, so sort of, so to speak. Um, so both my parents are from Puerto Rico. Uh, my mom was from a, a, a town uh, called uh, Latas, located in the Maya West area. Mm. My father was from um, the San Juan area, okay. uh, Rio, Rio Prelias, that's what the town where he grew up in. Sure. And during their time there, they met and you know they uh, got a relationship and then they eventually married. Um, at some time, I would say. Maybe when they were in their um, early 30s, maybe late 20s, they came to New York, and uh, where some of our other family had already uh, arrived here as well. Yeah. Um, we ended up uh, growing up in the um, South New Marson area, uh, particularly Stratford. I was uh, literally uh, a block away from Will, David, wow. and Joseph. Wow. Um, uh, also, also, my uh, our mutual friend Pablo Torres, which yes. is a, a, a fr friend, good friend of mine from many, many years that we used to skateboard. Uh -huh. uh, so there, we, we'll bridge the uh, connection there. Sure, uh, sure. But uh, God. born and raised uh, Stratford uh, Avenue, um, never really moved uh, until much, much later okay. uh, in life. Um, but basically grew up there that whole time. Sure. And what are some of your earliest memories um, growing up there? Uh, Saturday afternoons. Uh, it was it was notorious for all of the you know activities. Everyone everyone would always hang out Saturday. I guess it was like all the people that worked during the, their nine to five. Yeah. Uh -huh. they, were, they couldn't wait for Saturday to happen. Yep. Early Saturday afternoon, there's loud music playing. Everyone's outside playing. You had. Um, uh, the older folks, you know, playing on congas and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. playing cards and dominoes. Dominoes, dominoes uh, yep. Dominoes was the main, uh, was a mainstay, obviously, um, and all the, all that's fun stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, what else can I remember? Just you know, normal, normal kid stuff playing uh, around uh, in the neighborhood, and I had local friends, but didn't really venture off too far. Sure. Just stayed locally. Sure. And what what kinds of games or things would you all do? Um, we would play tag. Yeah. We would play ring Olivia. Ring Olivia. Uh, yes. Um, it was a similar similar game. Right? I don't even remember the, the rules. <laughs> I, yeah, it, 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 you're probably right at the cutoff of, of when Ring exactly. Olivia. Yeah. Yeah. It was stopped good, being yeah. played. Skelzies also. Skelzies, yeah. Uh, double double hopscotch, all that sort of stuff. Um, what else? Um, you know, uh, baseball was one of the things that um, my my cousins they were they they were big into, and I obviously you know I got I clung to that. And my father gave me my first bat and, and glove. Yeah. You know, uh, then uh, later on my my cousins ended up getting a skateboard, so I gravitated to that, and I wanted to you know get a skateboard. Uh, but then my venture into skateboarding didn't really take off until much, much later. Oh, okay, I see. A, there was a bridge in between, of course. I see, I see. So, I see. And where where did you go to elementary and junior high and high school? Sure. Uh, elementary, it was in the Bronx as well as junior high school. Yeah. I went to, um, initially, I started out at CS77, um, and then from there I went to CS67. Uh-huh. Um, followed by my junior high school, 174. I see, I see, I see. And what, what were your experiences like in those schools? 
Um, for the most part, pretty good. Um, during that time, it was like, you know, like, uh, I would say, yeah, late, uh, early 80s. Um, you know, the, you had the typical uh, fun, and then you had, you know, uh, gangs or, or, or crews or whatever that would pick on people, and yeah. naturally it was one of the victims. <laughs> but among many others, but, uh, sure. but for the most part, uh, a good overall good experience. Yeah. So, yeah. And then from there, I, um, I went to high school, graduated from high school in 1974, and went to aviation. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Big, big gap, uh, big distance between yes. Bronx and Queens. Yes. yes. And I lived in the, in the Bronx at the time. So it was sure. Pretty, pretty, pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, 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 I bet. I yeah, bet. Two different worlds. Two different worlds. Very and different, yeah. I up there, but it was like interest of mine at the time. Sure. Um, and what kinds of music would you hear in your household and on the street when you were growing up? Sure. Um, basically, as you might imagine, uh, you know, uh, hip hop, obviously. You know, yeah. A lot of Spanish music, salsa, merengue. Um, house music was quickly taking. Uh -huh. House music was quickly yeah. rising at that during that period. Yeah. That was a big, heavy influence, and you would hear house music all That's the right. time. Hip hop as well, you know, um, and so those are obviously early influences. Sure, sure. Yeah. And uh, do you remember how you first started getting into heavy music? Sure, sure. Um, it it begins with uh, my uh, journey in skateboarding. Actually. Okay, the two are so, tied, huh? Yeah. So, um, yeah, when. Uh, before I met Henry, um, I, I was friends with Pablo, and David, and Joseph. Uh -huh. uh, Joseph was a BMX freestyle rider, formerly of the Radicals. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, um, and they lived in the same area, so we would hang out. And I remember from that period, I always wanted to do freestyle biking, just yeah. like David. Um, but unfortunately, I could never afford a bike. <laughs> so, yeah. what did I do? I ended up settling for the next best thing, which was skateboarding. Yeah. Uh, to long and behold, uh, both David and Pablo skated. And uh, so they were, they were there, but I didn't meet them just yet. I see. Um, in my neighborhood, um, there was a, a, a guy named by the name of Eduardo. Uh, he was a, a BMX biker. And he had a mutual friend uh, named Jason that was into skating. And when I decided I wanted to do some skating, me and him would skate together. We would you know, go all over the place. We, met, we ended up uh, meeting David and, and Paolo later on down the line. Um, from there, that branched off and meeting um, a lot of the skaters from Team Zoo uh, down in the okay. Hunts Point, yeah. uh, Longwood area. So he also knew my cousin too, right? Yes, Ed and Frankie. Yeah, I used to skate with both of them. They were they were awesome. They were really funny. All their customers. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. So I became good friends with them, and they introduced me to a lot of their friends. Before you know, like my my journey of skateboarding took off. Um, wow. I uh, initially back then I wanted to, you know, uh, see how well I can branch into like the amateur scene. Sure. Maybe even break into you know. Uh, skateboarding a little bit more professionally. So yeah. So they have any points in mind at the time. So where that connects to music was when I started to see a lot of these skateboard videos, which included skate rock. Yes. And that was a big influence on, on me as well. Um, things like from the Bones Brigade, uh -huh. uh, that period, um, and that, that was pretty cool. Um, once I was in high school, I met up with uh, some of the skaters there, and my friend uh, Peter Pabon, um, he had a, a cassette tape of Suicidal Tendencies. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. So he had to let me borrow it, and it was, it was at the, the tail end of the semester. And, you know, he just told me to give it back to him you yeah. know, at the end of the week or whatever. Well, I never gave it back. <laughs> still have it. <laughs> actually, when we returned back from the, the, the next semester, I yeah. gave it back. Oh, that's what you gave it back. <laughs> gave it back. But it's one of those. I never gave anything back. <laughs> yeah, that's true. 
Oh, so come back to me next week. Never seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So interestingly enough, it was the How Will I Laugh Tomorrow album, and which was a great off album. Um, and I remember, which not many albums had this uh, effect on people, but just every song in that album was great. You know, yeah. and I fell in love with it immediately. Um, then I learned that they were having a show in New York. And they were having it the old, at the time, I think it was still Studio 54. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ritz. Yeah. And it was uh, West 54th Street, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And I had an opportunity to go see them. And that was my first introductory to metal. Wow. Yeah. Saw there. I saw them there. And I was so what, there. Yeah, what, what year would that have been? Oh, my God. I wish I could. That I early? Have to oh. I was, I was pretty, well, I was still in high school. I was okay. at the, the tail end of my high school. Yeah. Wow. So uh, I remember because at the time I didn't have anyone to go with. I went alone. Wow. I went alone. Yeah. And I remember distinctly uh, being on the line just to enter it. It was a rainy day. It was a long line to get. We were just about near the mountain corner. And a taxi pulls in the block. And there's a... The metalhead is just crossing by and he has a beer or whatever. And the taxi almost actually hits him. Yeah. The taxi driver has passengers inside and they're disputing and whatnot. And he ends up throwing a beer bottle at the taxi. Oh, cracking the windshield. Oh, And I don't know what happened, but I guess the camaraderie amongst metalheads or whatever. Everyone on the line started throwing their beer bottles at the taxi. <laughs> oh, no. and they're wailing on this ta- this poor taxi. You see the passengers like, you know, scared, like shitless. Look at those metal heads. <laughs> they're Satan for <laughs> Get out of here. The taxi actually reverses right into the sidewalk. Oh my god. Almost hitting us right where I'm standing. Like when we got out of the way, and then he just peels off the thing. <laughs> And I was just on the line, just trying to get into the venue. <laughs> oh my so, god! Yeah, so that was a pretty wild experience. Okay. And then they they were playing um, on the bill that night, if I recall correctly, was I believe Corona. Okay. It was the opening act, followed by wow. Creed. Oh wow! That was my first, was yeah. my first uh, you know, uh, a mean uh, creator, and then of course. Suicidal Tennessee. Wow. Yeah. And I remember bumping into Mike Muir in the, uh, you know, within the crowd before his, his, his time on the show, on stage. And uh, I said hello, and he, and he says, all he wanted was a Pepsi. <laughs> 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 That's what he would have said. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So did you get in the pit in that show? At the pit, uh, at that time, no, because it was my first. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you're just like, just, what is going on here? Yeah, it was just chaotic. Yeah. I just remember it being a full house that night. Yeah. And everyone was going crazy. Um, some fights broke out there as well. But, um. Gary used to love him too. Yeah, oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> so, these guys took me, these guys, and you, you and Pablo took me to see Machine Head. Oh, shoot. Wow. Yeah. Was, um, Dave Lombardo's other band, the first oh, band he got, uh, Grip Incorporated, Uh-huh. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. And, um, and these guys, oh, yeah. are, these guys are like, yo, we're going to go to the show, 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 we I see, I see, I see. And Machine Head start open with that song, the Vidi in the first song. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And I just remember like being like, "What the fuck?" It was so loud. <laughs> like I've been to Everything shows. Shook. We went yep. to the, you know, the biggest, a couple of little shows maybe at that time, but never been to like a big show like that. And just hearing the drums and everything, I was like, "What the fuck?" And then Gary <laughs> and Pablo were like. Let's go! And I was like, standing back, I was like, yeah. And Eric's in the back, like, we're going to watch me. And I just remember, that was the first big 
Harry is like pushing me into the pit. You see Harry behind me on purpose? You love Harry. So. Wow. <laughs> I remember that. That was, that was my first memory. A uh, big yeah. show. It was with you guys. Wow. Um, oh, uh, Gary, just to sit a little bit with your, your skateboarding, where would you skate around the Bronx? Like, were there common spots that you go or, or just anywhere? Yeah, actually, I mean, uh, locally, it was like uh, my block or in, in, uh, in front of Will's building, building with David and Paolo. Yeah. Um, there was also the local school next to us, sure. CS77. They had, at the time, their courtyard was wide open. Uh -huh. Right now it's full of schools. And yeah. it's completely yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's all these new building, new school structures up there. It's still in the works, I believe. Yeah. In any event, uh, we used to skate there. And, uh, Joseph used to bike there. And, uh, Henry used to also bike there too. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, now, okay. So um, that's where I first, you know, met Henry. But we weren't actually, you know, uh, you know, close knit friends yet when sure. we started playing as a band. That came a little bit later on down the line. I but see. We, that was a mutual meeting spot for us to just skate and freestyle, yeah. bike, and all that stuff. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, right by his house. Right, right by his house. Yeah. Wow. I see him on the window. Yeah. Lucky guy. This guy. Skateboard. Wow. I didn't last long. I tell you, it was terrible. Getting out of Ozzy. I didn't hear it. Um, were, did you end up joining any, um, like, skateboarding crews, yeah, yeah. collectives? Um, I ended up being a part of Team Zoom. Okay, okay, had, okay. Um, guys like uh, Space and Nene, as well as, um, uh, I think there's a few uh, big names, um, uh, Jerome, um, Sharky, a lot of those guys, um, they pretty much opened the door for me to uh, skate with them. I, I remember going to uh, my friend Jason and uh, Paolo and Dave, we, we all went to a local spot in Longwood. Okay. Like, just outside of Hudson's uh, Point. Sure. And there was a, a park called, they called it the Plaza. Yep, and, yep, yep, and, yep, yep. And that was a mutual spot for the skaters. And that was my first entry into that. And I met so many skaters there. They had a launch ramp. Wow. We all, like, I just watched them doing the craziest trip off the launch ramp, and I got stoked. Wow. And from there on, I just joined them, and I remember just like popping a seriously high ollie off their, their launch ramp. And it was, we were just doing the train. Like, yeah. One after the other, like 30 wow. minutes. It was sick. Wow. So, but it was so much fun, and those guys taught me so much. So wow. I, I owe them for, like, a lot of props for that. Wow. So, yeah. Um, did you, b before you all played at Malali, had you ever been to Malali, um, to, to skate? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we went there several times. When, uh, we, we, uh, both, uh, Henry and Joseph, uh, as well as another mutual friend, Victor Ortiz, yes. they used to uh, run the Malali Park, along with uh, a couple of other, their friends. Yeah. And, um, they introduced us to that place. Uh -huh. and, Wow, uh, that, that opened up the door for Lucas to skate, uh, having another venue to skate at, and it was pretty cool to see that its early beginnings yeah. and watch it evolve. Yeah. They added so many ramps and whatnot. One day, um, they started hosting tournaments there, competitions, yeah. and they had started off, I think, with the BMX bike yes. first. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then eventually they, brought, they opened it up to skateboarding, and I actually entered into one. Uh, yeah, I actually entered into one, and amongst the, uh, I think, a roster of about 40 skaters, I think I made like eight plays. Wow. Nice. That's that that like is. Good. That was like pretty good. I remember the start of my run, I was going to do a 360 off the ramp, and I, my friend Pablo was recording it on video at the time, and while he was trying to record me, um, I fell. <laughs> oh no! I fell with my thing in my run. So I, instead of starting it off with the jump, I actually just did started doing just ground tricks, and I finished it off with the jump off the ramp. Wow! Yeah. Wow. Actually, it turned out better than I thought, and I was really nervous too. <laughs> really nervous. Nerves. Yeah, yeah. Another uh, famous spot you've probably heard of. Um, 
Brooklyn Bridge Banks. Oh, okay, down okay. By, uh, City Hall. From sure. Hall. That was a popular spot. Uh, I, that was my first um, experience into trying to compete. And uh, <laughs> I, I just remember being nervous once they called my name. And I did a, I tried to do a poly off the, the divider. Yeah. Over the divider, actually. I ended up landing chest first oh. over the divider. Uh, oh, my the, God. The announcer goes, yeah, I'll eat the chess plank. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Wow. That was a lot of fun. But, um, yeah, that whole experience was, was awesome. Wow. Um, so how did you get the idea? How did you get into um, to playing music? So, yeah, so going back into my first uh, experience witnessing Suicidal Tennessee's and Creator and watching them play, and how awesome and, and they sounded just like the records, their recordings. And I just, I was blown away by it. Yeah. And that was the immediate start. Um, I, afterwards, I managed to get myself the first guitar. Um, just like you guys, I went to Castle Hill Music. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, that's the place to go. The place to go was our local spot. That's where it was. And I bought my first guitar, which was the DC Rich Bitch. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was, and it was a unique uh, uh, color because it had a graphic of like a snake skin on the face of it. Oh, which huh. was pretty unique. And that I, is. I, I, I remember going there with my mom and showing her that I wanted that one. She thought it was too much money and everything, <laughs> and so on and so forth. That's too much. I think we ended up um, we ended up coming to a mutual agreement. I'll come up with half of the money. Yeah. And you know, she would pay the other half. Right? Yeah. And that's how I got it. You know. Were but you I just remember going to the red and black one? one? It was the red and black one. Uh -huh. so yeah. Yeah. Were you in high school still? I was yeah. I was um yes. I was in high school at the time because suicidal tendency was when I was Okay, okay, okay. So all, all your high school years. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so how did you like learn to play the instrument? Like what, what was your process? Um, good question. Uh, I think uh, generally just like most of us, we had friends that were playing and yeah. uh, they showed me my first, you know, chords and notes and so on. So my friend Tony was the one that first showed me my first chords and then um, Followed by my friend uh, uh, Robert Torres. He was playing with a group of friends. I think they formed a band, uh, which, was a, which was a mutual skater friend of mine, and he lived like in the Hunts Point area. Okay, what was their band? Do you remember their name? Um, I don't recall the name of their band at the time, um, but I remember they were playing like Biohazard okay. at the time. They were playing from the uh, Retribution album. I see, I see, I see. And they were teaching me some of their riffs. And one of the things that I couldn't grasp was the alternate picking and as well as the palming sure, uh, sure. mechanic. And he taught me how to do that. And from there on, I just, I just took off from there. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, so were the Blackout guys, was that the first group that you started playing with? Or were there others before that? Not initially. Okay. Um, Initially, I was uh, with, with some of the skater friends that I met in school yeah. uh, at the time. Uh, I remember Timmy as the other guitarist, as well as my uh, friend Alex. Um, they they were both into metal and hardcore and whatnot. And I remember Timmy being uh, close by. He, he lived in Westchester Square area. Yeah. And I met up with him one day with a, mutual, with a couple of friends of his. And we ended up playing together, jamming. And then we formed a band called Urban Decay. Ah, yeah, so okay. That's, uh, for, that's my early start to, or introductory to playing in a band. And what kinds of, um, like, what, what was the sound of Urban Decay? It was, I would say, it was uh, uh, hardcore slash thrash. Okay, yeah. Um, where a lot of our influences were like, you know, DRI. Sure. You know, uh, I think... Biohazard was maybe a little bit later, so maybe some sicker at all. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Um, by the way, there's probably been like 15 bands named Urban Decay since then. Probably so, right? Probably. Oh, yeah. probably. Oh, my God. Yeah, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. So, um, you know, it sadly didn't, it, we didn't play anywhere. It's just like we just were jamming. Sure. 
So I knew that David was playing the yeah. guitar, and you know, we learned I was, I was playing as well, and we decided to hang out and jam together. So I would go to his apartment, bring my guitar and my practice amp, and we would just chant the songs, you know, uh, Metallica, Megadeth, you know, and uh, that, that was a lot of fun. Um, he introduced me to other bands like, you know, The Cure. Sure. Um, what's another so band? He introduced me to The Cure. The Cure, Cure was a big influence. Um, there was another band that was sort of like, the, obviously, uh, Nirvana. Nirvana, yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember some of the other uh, old bands. Weezer. Oh, okay, Weezer okay. Was another influence of his, and um, there was another, another band that I can't remember at the moment, but we were playing those songs and jamming to that. And then sure. Weezer so, was out then? Hmm? Weezer was out already back then? I, I think so, like during, during. I feel like Weezer was later on. It could have been. It could have been. Florida. It, it could have been. Um, but yeah, did they teach you? When Joe left, did they start showing me the song? Like, um, was they kind of still in the band? I think I came in when David was, I think he was probably leaving at that point. He showed, like, I think he showed, he showed, he showed, me, he showed like, me riffs, and Joseph showed me the riffs, and I started uh, to learn them, and jamming with you guys. And passing the torch to you. Yeah, I yeah. see. Yeah, it was basically passed uh, down to me once some. Um, you know, I think Dave left. Yeah. yeah. I see. So how, like, you, you might not know the answer to this question, but around how long were Joe and David in blackout before they left? That's a good question. Any good. sense? A couple months. A couple yeah, months. Okay, so it was all a very but short amount of time. Yeah, it was yeah. Kind of very I fast. see. Like, that's true. Very the ball started rolling, and they were like, "Ah, it's too much." <laughs> <laughs> so did did they play? Uh, were they? Did they play at the Malali show, or they weren't there? Yes. Okay, so they never actually played live yeah, with we Blackout. Started playing out with us three. I see. There was one um, occasion where Joseph did play with us, and that was when um, me and Henry were in Rwadi. Yes. Oh, okay, that's when he played with yeah, us. I see. It was, it was funny because that's when I think the, our bonding came about because we... There was a large, I guess, lapse in time where we didn't communicate to see each other. Yeah. One day, Lavadia, we bump into each other. <laughs> didn't know that we went to the same school. <laughs> unreal, unreal. <laughs> That's true. And after that, uh, Pablo played with you guys. Huh? Pablo, Pablo played with that. Yeah. Yeah. Pablo played with us in that talent show. I yeah, see. Anyway. There I was see. two. There was actually two um, talent shows, but the first one, both Joseph and Pablo played. With Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so Pablo was playing bass? Pablo was playing bass. At the bass time, that's before time. Will was in it. Yes. Huh? So I also see. Too young to even, like, to go be there with you guys. Probably, because it was a minor. Because it was college, and I don't know. But it was a minor. Yeah. yeah. That was before. Yeah. That was before Malali. Awesome. That was before. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe before Malali, the then. Mm -hmm. That was all before. Wow. Yeah. And then later on... Um, there was another opportunity to play uh, uh, another talent show within Luwadia that me, Henry, and um, Pablo played in. And we were tr trying to get Joseph to, to come, I think, but I think right. he couldn't make it to that one. He, he, he made the first one, but he barely I made it. I remember the picture of the yeah. second one. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Okay. Pablo did this. Yes. He's, he's oh, okay. Yeah, he's wow. Here that. He's here today. Wow. He's here. Oh, yes, yes. He made that so was that your your very first um, logo then? I was the very the only. The very fir first and only. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's a cool sticker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that became our, uh, our, our main logo. Wow. Wow. So did Pablo was was Pablo ever like in the band long term or just he just played? A couple yeah. shows with you all. Yeah, I think he didn't play, he wasn't in the band long term. I think he basically would, you know, join in and fill in for us. I see. You know, at the time. Uh, he, was, he was learning bass still, um, but he enjoyed playing it. And yeah. 
Yeah. You know, we asked him to help us out. And it all happened so fast. It did. Like, it yeah. was like, it wasn't even like a, yeah, it was weird. It really was a couple months. Like, it was. Wow. We just basically acted on instinct and, you know, spur on the moment. I think that song, Day Day, was called a lot. Yeah. We created that song. Okay. I remember writing the trail on the couch, like yes. the bass lines, like writing a song, yeah. and then yeah. Joe did the lyrics and all that, so we just kind of still did that then, but then it's just so long ago. Wow. Yeah. Um, so for those who haven't uh, been able to listen to Blackout before, why don't you all just say a little bit about what you all sounded like when you got together, if the sound evolved over time, a little bit like that. I just wanted to sound like the next Cavalero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I wanted to imitate who I love. And I just love Sakatoro. Uh huh. And we were playing battles and Sakatoro and Slayer. You know. So, wow. I was really going to go to Slayer. Slayer screams. There's no way to do that. Yeah, like, I know. Right. I was like low, yelling and screaming, whatever. And the character was in the back of screaming and yelling. Yeah. yeah. It was cool. It was a lot of fun playing, recording, that sort of thing. Was it collaborating? Sure. Sure. Um, so after the Malali show, um, talk some more about you know the next stage of the band. Other shows you play at? Were there other Bronx shows that you all were playing yeah, at that point in time? The train depot. The train depot. Yep. 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 Uh, it's Williams oh, Bridge. Uh, that one was Blackthorn. Yes. Black yeah. Thorn. But the the train depot was Williams Bridge and um, I forget the cross street, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a terrible. It was like just the band. Maybe a couple. Yeah. Yeah. What was that punk band that we used to play with? Always back in the days. The guy. Wasted. From the Bronx, the Wasted. The Wasted. The Wasted. Yeah. Yeah. Wasted. Yeah. Wasted. Yep. Yeah, Chucky's still around. Chucky's still Chucky around, yep. He's still playing. Yes. So he's still shout out to him and everybody there. Yep. You know, Frankie was playing drums on that band. Yep, uh, Frankie. Yep. 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 Cool. Um, but yeah, the Train Depot. And yeah, that show was like, that was a bust. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, yeah, we played like one or two songs. It wasn't really anybody there. It wasn't Vicky Camp there. Right Somebody now. just wanted to stop. Somebody oh was my like, God. Right, to the finish. Yeah, wow. Like, hey, I remember that. Yeah, I mean, this is before. Oh, yeah. There was no internet. Yeah, yeah. that's phones. right. That's right. It was like a flyer. Like, you would yeah. make a flyer hand out. Can I break my string on uh, the stage? I mean, that's why they canceled us. <laughs> they, they canceled us because we we're, we didn't bring in that many customers. Right. And they, they, you know, no one's buying beer at yep. the time, and we were like yeah, one of maybe two it's... bands that were playing at night. It was really empty, so kind of can't blame the owner for keeping sure. it out. Sure, <laughs> sure. Then there was Blackthorn. The Blackthorn. Did you, were, were you all at the Blue Frog? There was a show at a place called the Blue Frog, which was like at the, I think it was at the end of the Four Line. Um, yeah, yeah, it was just one. I think one or two shows, um, oh, but yeah. like go to Memphis played there. Uh, I think the Woodlawn stop on the Four Line. Oh, um, yeah. Sounds familiar, but I don't think we were. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. I played Train Depot, Blackthorn, Castle Heights. Yeah, the most fun we had was Candy's a Bar. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And there was neighbors. Um, yeah, we played uh, my friend Candy Lurie's. I saw her not too long ago. I saw her like, oh, she keeps where, where does she live? Uh, she still lives in the Bronx. Okay. Uh, Valentine's. She used to live oh, on Valentine's. Oh, so so it was her place where the Valentine shows took place, huh? Yeah. She, oh. she had apartment shows, and her poor mother. Uh, <laughs> like, all this deep, like, she would literally rearrange the whole living room, empty up the living room. Yeah, the furniture would put, she would put in her room, and she would let us play. That's insane. And all these kids showed up to this lady's house. I was just like, oh my god, like going to her room, and we would just crank it up as loud as we can. I think I was screaming out of a, a 
speaker. Like, <laughs> I have a big speaker, and I have a speaker in the front. Right. And I put a microphone in. One of my favorite yeah, shows. Yeah, and yeah, it was yeah, all these yeah, kids moshing this fucking girl's apartment. <laughs> <laughs> What wait, what floor was it on? Was it on? It was. It wasn't the first floor. <laughs> so the people so, below you definitely yeah, heard. Yeah, <laughs> like five, seven, ten, wow. Yeah, I don't know. Yes. Oh, that's when you got your speakers stolen <laughs> out of your car. Let's look at this car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on the wow. Um, there was a venue in uh, Los Angeles. Oh, was it the music store? There's a music store that. Um, I just know we played it with Fahrenheit, and that was also kind of a bust. There was no bust. Like, for some reason, the, the show didn't draw. Yeah. Yeah. Castle Heights. Castle Heights. Castle Heights. Castle Heights. Sure. Right? Yep. Sure, it's sure, sure. Spiral. Spiral. Oh, yeah. Spiral. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Down in Manhattan. And the pyramid, too, right? And the pyramid? Um, did you all, I think it might have been before Blackout formed, but there was like a, a show that some Bronx folks talk about at a church, Metal Mania or something, Metal Madness. It was like on Tremont Avenue. Uh, that might have been later. Oh. Was that Bronx Underground? No, no, no. That's, uh, that is like, this, this was definitely in like, I don't know, 94, 95, 96, somewhere around there. Um. Uh, so, okay, okay, but it's like those house shows played that that house show where we we um uh, no was it um uh, I think the one that Ramon booked and we didn't we didn't have money to pay us so I was say pay us and, and beer. Mm-hmm. I was By the way, Ramon from Dorimentis did play with us for a short time. Oh yeah. Oh. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. So okay. Him, yes. crew, yeah, and he wanted other guitars. And he yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. see. I see. But we played that backyard show. Yes. Right? With Irene. Yes. Their, their first show, right? Or their, maybe their, their second show. show. I forget, but yeah. Show. Yes. And Phil met us. He, I met Phil at Malawi. Okay. The second time in Malawi. Oh, okay. okay. He was like, listen, I'm in a band called Irene. And I'm in. Not Irene. Right. <laughs> but whenever we got invited to play that show, I think I, I even called Phil. I was like, yo, I'm going to book you. I'm going to book you guys on a show, man. I was like, yeah. Put down. Like, What's the name of your band again? He's like, I read. You know, stupid me. I, I, I was like, maybe it was Burma Wars or something. I was like, oh, man, yeah, this, this guy's in a band. It's great. It's called Iraq. <laughs> I'm on the flyer. <laughs> Blackout, this man. And I rock opening. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, man. These guys, they show up and they're like, looking at the flyer, they're like, why does it say I rock? And I was like, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> oh. By the way, those guys are awesome. Yeah, um, yes. We loved playing with them and they had such a great and then, sound. And they blew up. Oh, oh man. Yes. They were, they were yeah. happy. They were happy yeah. to see and share the stage with. So shout out to all those guys and everybody else that we played. Thank you. you know, yeah, EDH, Dorimentis, yes. uh-huh. High Rate, props to all you guys. And, and anybody else that we right. don't remember at the moment. Sure. Right. You know, I played in Rights Reserve for a little while you know, after, after these guys. Yeah, yeah. We played in the Lion's Den once. Oh, the Lion's Den. The Lion's Den. Where was the Lion's Den at? Oh, that was that was like down, downtown, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. It's yeah, more it's touristy now. Like, yeah. Like, like ah. jazz and blues bars and stuff like that. Sure. Even back right then, I think. It's not like the St. Mark's place. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, like the west, west, right? West. On the west side. West side. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We played in uh, MIA. Uh, you know that song? Yeah. Oh, MIA. Uh, that was one of those uh, songs. Last song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, sadly, we didn't get to record that one. Wow. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you do you, do you need me to um? To, okay. Yeah, because we can always just restart it again. Um, so the backyard show. Uh, why don't you all talk a little bit more about that? And would you all play other backyard shows also? We don't play the. I don't think we played the 
So long. Just practice. Just practice in St. Lawrence. Yes, yes. Across the street. Across the street. Yeah, yeah. I do remember the one that we did, which was like in the Castle Hill area. Yes. Oh. Yeah. That's near uh, Jersey where the where there lives. But anyway, it, there was a backyard show that we played with a few of the bands. I don't remember which actually the bands that we shared that with. But I remember it being like a rainy night and it was just like Woodstock. Wow. And uh, everyone's just moshing in the grass. And we ended up having to cut our show short because they got shut shot. down, right? Oh, we oh, shut, 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 shut. wait! <laughs> oh, that's probably why I forgot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's all. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He got he got a really bad shock from that, so we stopped. Oh that's my god! Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I think I think one of those shows too. I don't I don't remember which one, but. But Barry, like, like, got accidentally thrown down the stairs or something, and like, I don't know. I, th th those sure. shows sound insane. Sound insane. <laughs> that's, that's yeah. I'm glad that he's still he's alright. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, Barry, Charles, Barry, and everybody. Wow. Um, so, uh, we'll, we'll we can go back to shows in a second, um, but. Why don't you all talk more about um, rehearsing? Um, would you primarily rehearse uh, in in this basement, or did you all eventually go to um, like a rehearsal space around? Yeah, it was mostly in the basement, but, mostly. Then, but then we lost that place. We had a rehearsal. Musical Musical Yes. Oh, okay, okay. I see. Yeah. Yep. yep. On, yep. on East Chester Road, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's where you recorded the demo. We recorded one of the first demos there. Yeah, it was on the tape, and I remember Frank Frank from Fahrenheit was one that picked up the story. Well, he he was there, and then he recorded. We just recorded like the one on the cassette. Yeah, but there was the one that we actually recorded. Recorded with Richie, right? Your your friend Richie. Yeah, he was helping. Yeah, it's funny, Richie. Okay. Yeah. Engineer. I remember Engineer. Those, yeah. somebody from one of the other bands. Oh, man, I forget who it was. He came in during session. Like, oh, the bass sounds really low. I don't know how good it was. I think it sounds great. <laughs> 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 Later on, after it was like done, I was like, yeah, my bass does sound really low. <laughs> I never fixed it up. Again. But I didn't know. I was a kid. Yeah, sure. It was the early beginnings of all yeah. the music. I see. That place was like the very beginning when we started going to. Uh, it was affordable. It was local, and they had some uh, pretty decent equipment there yeah. in the rooms. And it was a great place for us to go. We couldn't go to the, you know, the basement. That's right. You know? So it was actually pretty cool. Not many, not many rehearsals. Uh, space in the That's right. I know a bunch of Bronx bands use that as rehearsal right. space yeah. too. I think Go to Memphis did. Mm -hmm. uh, I think DBH did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They did too. Um, yeah. Um, so, how many demos did Blackout record over the years? And why don't you all kind of talk through the process of recording each of them? Oh, you did one at Bronin's. Is that's the one Frank maybe Frank, helped with, huh? Frank, that's the one. Yeah, yeah that's the one. Because they had a little recording studio for a bit. Yes, I don't right. think they still. Shout out to Frank from Park yeah. Brown Heights for helping us out. He 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 took it upon you know uh, and was willing uh, to help us out with that. So a big thank you. That was that, that was, later. No, that was, we had to drive out. Yeah, yeah. that was a giant. Upstate. Um, um, yeah, he recorded all of those like. Comps. There was those um, compilations we had. Oh, First okay. Amendment. First Amendment was one of them, and then uh, was it you know, Found Hope too? Found, found Hope. Found Hope. Oh, the second one. The second one. Yeah, we were. We were doing a lot of good. But those were actually decent recordings. Yeah. 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 During that yeah. period, absolutely. That yeah. guy also recorded. I think that was the guy that I rate. We met that guy through I rate. 
Right. I see. Yeah, yeah. They used to go upstate, I know, to record. So I see. So you recorded with the same person. I can't remember the name. Yeah, yeah. If anyone you know watching this, uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, sorry. sorry but about if you it. know that information, please share that. I sure, yeah. We'll read it later. <laughs> <laughs> we'll read it later <laughs> but yeah, that guy was amazing. He yeah. He sounded yeah, great. Those little recording, those recordings. Great. The cover song. The recording studio in that, in that house of his. It was really, yeah. really, yeah, individual rooms. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was like one of the active songs were actually like, recorded in Master. My partner. Okay. Okay. So um, just jumping back to our uh, our uh, show at Malali, um, I remember uh, that prior to our set, we were rehearsing on stage while everyone, because that that same day was a, if I'm not mistaken, there was a freestyle competition for BMX. Yeah. So uh, everyone was doing their thing, and. We were rehearsing at the time, and I remember spotting Joey Z from Life of Agony uh, riding his bike at the time. And wow. Yeah, he was there. He was there that day. Wow. And uh, I remember playing, um, I think, uh, a riff from These Eyes from that first that we were that right now. Yeah. Great album, yeah. by the way. And just for him. Huh? Just for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to give him a shout out by playing that riff, and it was cool. He recognized and he came. Came over and talked to me for a little bit. It came and you know, gave him props for his album and success. And it was like, cool, cool. I didn't even know he freestyled. Yeah. You know? So, uh, yeah, until that day. And it's like, you know, cool and, you know, good luck with the show and whatnot. So that was wow. pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. That is cool. And I know you also wanted to add a few more details about the, the show at uh, Candy's apartment. Yeah, yeah. That was like, very, very interesting. A great, great experience. Uh, I wish I could remember, maybe you guys could help me out with the other two bands that we played with that night, but uh, I know it was so long ago. I so so I forgive us for that. If anyone watching this, you can share that in the comments or whatnot. We'll read the comments later. Go down. And, uh, we'll announce that. Sure. I think Go to Mentis might have been there. Could have been. Could have been. I know they played. I know they would play in people's apartments. They ah. had some shows. It was okay. also yeah. the, the other kid that had. Um, Apartment shows by Hunter Point. And, you know, I don't think we were played there, but I'm not part of the show. Mm. But I think that's when I was hanging out with the Rangers with you guys. Mm. Yeah, that's kids' house. So, one of the interesting things that happened uh, during that, that night um, was uh, two police officers ended up knocking on the door of Candy's uh, apartment. I'm not shy. And, yeah, 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 yeah. And there was a lot of people, it was a full house. And, uh, you know, they knocked the door, we opened, Candy opened the door, and they were saying, you know, hey, we are big fans of the music, you know, we love the music, and we have complaints about it. But unfortunately, some of the tenants have, have complained about the loud noise and the music. And, Can you imagine a full uh, live band? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the box. In the Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no <laughs> sound in the game. Nothing. It wasn't exactly the norm during that period, obviously, but it's yeah, yeah. slowly becoming a thing, I'm sure. Uh, so, you know, they, they told us that, and uh, Candy's mom comes to the door, and she said that, you know, this was a birthday request from her daughter, Candy, and she gave her consent, and that's why they, we were all here today, and they have my full cooperation consent and whatnot, and the cops were like, Fine, thank you so much, ma'am. Enjoy the show, have a great time. And that was it. And we still played? Were, yeah, we still played. Wow. We still played. But it, it, interestingly enough, uh, poor timing on my part. I ended up having to use the bathroom just before our show. So, and it just right at the time we were called up. So, when I was done, I opened the door. Amazingly enough, the crowd was like waiting for us to play, so they're all like lined up outside the bathroom door, and they parted the path for me to get to where we were playing. It was hilarious, hilarious, but it was pretty cool at the same time. And I just went up and we just started playing, and it went ape shit. Like, <laughs> like the crowd was just moshing uh, all over the place in the living room. Yeah. In the living room. How many people? Oh my. Uh, I that in there, do you think? Uh, it, it felt like 30. 
Was was Candy a musician? Did Candy was no, Candy ever played in a band? Just the no, like, part of the scene. Yeah, yeah. she's a part of the scene. Very much I was on a one to see us play. She wants to play in her apartment. Yeah. And, and you did. did. Thank you. That was great. Wow, wow. Um, so, were you all like a part of or down with um, the BDC when that? We were Took around. Off. We knew all those guys. Yeah. I guess we were technically a BBC band. Yeah. We didn't yeah. get the tattoo. I was cool. <laughs> There's still time. <laughs> I remember we had to get tattoos. Yep. And I was like, man, everybody, everybody, everybody around was getting like, the BBC tattoo. I rate. I just remember really thinking in my head, I was like, tattoos are forever. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I have Terrible tattoos <laughs> after that. I mean, some other terrible decisions. <laughs> yeah. But I just remember, like, you know, people getting it. Oh, there was that one kid that got it right on his fucking chest, his stomach, like right here. Wow. <laughs> he wasn't even in any of the bands. What the fuck was that kid doing? Yeah. Um, yeah. He loved the scene. Love the scene. Yeah. But um, BBC was great. Yeah. It wasn't like um, it wasn't like a violent gang. Or right, right, it was just a unity of bands mm-hmm. right, um, right. that that played shows together, you know. And back in those days, you know, there was a lot of those other like you know, um, kind of crews or, or whatever that they had beef with each other. Yeah, I don't think anybody. Not that I remember. I mean, I don't think so. we weren't really. You know, like I said, we didn't get rent. See, but <laughs> I don't remember it being ever like a, a like a gang. Yeah, sure, but sure, I, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Just a, a you know, community of uh, uh, local bands and the local scene. Yeah. Uh, by the way, shout outs to all those bands that actually opened the door yeah. for us and yeah. us into their roster whenever they played shows and always were very inclusive to us. And uh, you know, shout out to all Thank you. Good old times. Going to Mantis, I Ray, you know, uh, Ranks Reserve, uh, uh, Wasted, uh, any, any other bands that we could. We could and Driven by, by Hatred was one of my favorite. Driven by Hatred, for sure. Oh, they, yeah. they were cool. They were, we played with them. We played with them. Playing with them. Yeah, yeah. So, very, yeah. Good, very like, stark. So, we played with them. Yeah. You know, trying to dig in. Obviously, I, I rap. <laughs> <laughs> He does. <laughs> he does. Um, and I, I, I know some, some of the people who were very active in the BBC. They had like maybe weekly or monthly meetings or something even at um, at Tito's house. Um, yeah, I think I went to one of those. Okay. Yeah, when they first started, mm. I remember they, I went to one of those meetings. I remember that's when Jason joined uh, Irene. Mm. I think, I think, yeah, I think that was that was maybe a team as was And I think Ramon, probably some other people, made the first and only uh, issue of a BDC zine. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I vaguely remember, but I do remember. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, that spawned as a result of those 
meetings and skills, I would presume. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. That makes that makes a lot of sense. I think by that time I had, I think, stopped playing music for a while. I after, see. After these guys, I took a break. I see. What what year was it when Blackout broke up? I think it was just after we played the last show, which was Black Thorn, I think it was. Okay. Uh, I think Black Thorn was the last show. It was an epic show, too. Yeah. To close it out. And Irene, we played with Irene that evening. Yes. Um, I remember distinctly because uh, being that we knew it was our last show, we wanted to pay the sound man to help us. You know, and our, uh, and I remember we used to yeah. the sound, sound guys back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was the thing. Sound. You had to take the sound guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you the sound guy like 20 bucks. I'm like, hey, yo. Yo, Make sure we sound good. Make sure we sound good. <laughs> absolutely. I think I even popped the string, but managed to somehow make it back and continue on with the show. And wow. The crowd was nuts that night. I remember people stage diving off of our stage when we were playing on set. And, um, uh, Great venue, great crowd, and every every band that played that night had a great show. Black Horn? Black Horn? I don't know. I saw so, so 200 and Thursday or something. Yeah, yeah, and Bainbridge, yeah. I saw Hatebreed play there one time. That's right, they played there before. Uh, Candaria. Yep. Uh, uh, that's right. Other than Sick of It All, that's probably the biggest um, show that's taken place in. Yeah. The Bronx, I, I imagine. Sick of it all at the Malali show. Uh huh. That was, a, that was a good show. Yeah. That was, that was epic. Just the, the fact that they even came to the Bronx to play. That was, yeah, that was nice. Uh, Victor and I think Louis Perez. Uh huh. Uh, shout yeah. out to him and, and everybody there at Malali for somehow managed to make that arrangement, you know, with the local scene and whatnot. Uh, that was awesome. A great time for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, did y'all ever play with Hellbound? Did y'all know those oh, guys yeah. very much? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, early on. Yep. Early on, it's Hellbound. Wow. Sepultura was a big, um, a big kind of unifying thing in their, in their development as well. I feel like we played with those guys at Castle Heights. Like, they were wow. on the very, I'm, yeah, very, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. Yeah. And they played some Blackthorn shows a little bit too, but yeah. Yeah, shout out to Castle Heights because we played quite a few yeah. shows with these guys and with us and other bands. They, they somehow managed to get us into their, their roster of bands to play. And we had some memorable shows there. So yeah? What what was it like playing at Castle Heights for, for y'all? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, used to, I used to use my uh, fake ID to get beer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I remember they had a, a, a great scene there. Uh, lots of people used to come out. Everybody, came yeah, out. everybody came out. And that's the great dark stage. Day that's right. Yep. Uh, back in the days. Amazing. There. Great, great thing. Great thing. Yeah, yeah. Sure. That was great. Kevin, Kevin used to do good shows. Kevin Caslights. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think after we played our first show there, um, the bands that we played with they were calling us back whenever they had another opportunity to play. Sure. They wanted us on the road. So weird back then, because it wasn't like a, an email or anything. It was literally like, We're about somebody to call you, like, call you. Uh -huh. and then you yeah. like, great, and like, come play this show. Yeah. Me, oh, who, where? Let me write it down. Yeah. And then you got to make a flyer. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Flyers were mostly handwritten, too, back yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you would draw some. Draw, oh, yeah. yeah. Do our stickers on it. You all have some of your old flyers still. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 don't I have it in my house. house. Yeah. Break this off. Oh no, no, that's fine. Chucky had posted. Oh, that guy's. He, 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 has, he so has some. Yeah, he has so much good stuff. He does. Yeah. He posted uh, yeah. a shot of the cassette demo that we had. Uh huh. Shot of the sticker. Yep. And I think uh, a flyer from one of the shows that we were part. Where he was also part of as well. Sure, sure. Uh, and some other bands. And uh, I remember my post that years ago on Facebook. Yeah, that's so, right. He has cool. an incredible collection. Yeah, some pictures I can send you to Pablo Duran. Yes, Pablo. Yes. Yes. I'm going to give a shout out to Pablo Torres. 
who uh, came up with the idea for, uh, he was, you know, he, he came to us and was like, you guys have a logo or, or anything? And, and, you know, maybe I can draw something. And he came up with this and this was iconic and it's stuck out ever since. Absolutely. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so what are some of the you know most memorable shows, ones that kind of stick with you, like specific shows that you all played as Blackout? I mean, it sounds like like uh, Candy's Candy House was, was one of them. Yeah. I really love the Lolly Park shows. Lolly Park was pretty cool. Yeah. Outdoor venue. Stadium. Yeah. 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 Along with their competitions for yes. the Max and the They had wrestling. They had wrestling, oh, they had they had wrestling had too. Yes. Wrestling too. Whoa. It was like the earlier. Uh, was it the Iron Sheik at one point? No way. Really? <laughs> no. I don't know. I don't. Is he the one with the mustache? I remember seeing like, so. right? yeah. <laughs> like that. I think so. Yeah. Wow. Did yeah. he work at Winchester Hall too for a while? It could have been him. I feel like he was, a, he was definitely around. I've seen wow. that a couple times. Yeah. They just got a four million grant. Uh, oh. Yeah. Wow. Ramos is on it. Check. Four million dollars. He's still there. Oh, I know. Yes. Yeah, he's still there. Those, those shows were great. Oh. Yeah. Wow. That's the other show. I thought I was a shit back then. <laughs> man, I was an 18 year old kid. Man, I'm playing a show, man. I walk around in the shades. I don't know where I was. He definitely had a Johnny Cage look. Yeah, yeah. And then I started. Then I was in the bank with Johnny Cage. Yeah, 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 yeah. What a cocky motherfucker. <laughs> Absolutely. Um. Uh, uh, any any other shows that you you want to mention that's sticking out? Castle Hill, uh, no, not Castle, Castle Heights. Castle Heights. Castle Heights. I like the Black Dorm. Black Dorm was great. Yeah. Black Dorm was great. Black Dorm was great. Yeah. Black Dorm was great. I just remember. Man, so I was drinking way too much for a you fucking know, <laughs> little teen piece of shit. Like, I remember like I would be like partying. Everybody's like partying, hanging out, and I'm like, oh, we're going on in five minutes. And I'm like, Five minutes? <laughs> and I used to remember going to the bathroom, locking the door, and I just cold water in my face. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, oh man, we're about to play. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, coming out of the bathroom, like, okay, I'm ready. We're ready. Props to him for bouncing back after something. For real. <laughs> it's like partying way too hard. Like, I was just having so much fun over here. Man, we're at the show, my friends were here. Man, terrible. <laughs> wow. So, um, so what? What's the story behind um, like blackout breaking up and all? Um, I feel like at that time I was. I feel like it was more me. I just kind of like, like I said, stopped playing music. Yeah, sure. Um, nothing against these guys. Yeah, we still kept in touch, but I was also very young. I don't. Yes. Cocky piece of shit. <laughs> I just remember, like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. I might have had a girlfriend. I might have a new girlfriend. You know, sure. Young, dumb, and in love. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, still had my base, but I didn't really touch it. And maybe after hanging out for a while, I think I started playing again. But then I just started, I kind of wanted to just venture out, play other stuff. Yeah. That's when I started playing with Rights Reserve. Okay. You know, so I, did, I guess nothing ever happened. We didn't have like a blowout. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Or arguments. You just stopped I, playing. Yeah, I think um, in addition to that, um, our schedules with like work and stuff like that just didn't really sync very well. Yeah. I mean, these guys were, yeah, these guys were like working real jobs. Yeah, yeah. He was working at the NTA. Okay, right. sure. So I remember, like, everybody, these guys are, like, living, you know, like, real lives. And I was just, like, this little shit. Running around, like, ah, I got this girlfriend. Really <laughs> I can't <laughs> practice. <laughs> Something stupid, you know? Yeah, I think it was, a, it was pretty difficult to, you know, get our schedules the same. You know? Yeah. I, I was working a traditional 9-5, but uh, 
Henry at the time it was you know uh, work with the MTA yeah, right. and we would have a fluctuating uh, I see. You know, yeah. yeah. Sure, sure. So that that continued in the days. Uh -huh. Were you also in school or you were starting college or something like that? No, I think I left Henry. college. Henry? Yeah, I mean work too, I think. Or I don't know. No, I mean I I I didn't go back to college until later. Later, like twenty four. Back to school. I think I was just running around partying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Still, when, you know, after a year, maybe I still start playing music again. But That's when you started with Rights Reserved? Rights Reserved, and then did that for a little while, and then, um, then I started the band with Leon. Rights Reserved broke up, me and Leon were still friends. Yeah, yeah. Guitars, so sure. We started like a heavy rock band called Side C I D E. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then Alex was in that band. No, it was me, Leon, this guy Carlo, okay. and uh, one of my good friends, Dean. Okay. The vocalist of that band. I see. That band played around for a while. Then that band broke up. How would you spell? Is it C Y D E? Is that right? Oh, C I D E. I see. I see. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. It was a terrible name. Probably, probably my idea. <laughs> um, I, Aisha from Defiled Souls mentioned side. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure if you knew Aisha or not, but she's younger than you are. But so side to her, they were older people yeah, um, playing. Probably. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm still kind of young. Nothing younger. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but side played for a while and we did a lot of cool stuff. We recorded the, at the same guy it was uh, Jean Christophe, the guy. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. John, side, thank you for helping us yeah. with that recording. So side, side went and recorded with him, went back and recorded with him. Oh, and okay, okay. Band. And that band broke up, and then me and Dean started Johnny Cage. And Gigi played in that Gigi too, right? Was from Crystal Purchase was playing drums, um, and I'm sorry, uh, my friend Ryan, he never ever played in a band before. And I was like, "Who's this scream? Scream was band. We started this with Ryan. Do you remember Ryan? Yeah, Ryan Rosado. So, so he's going to, yeah. you know, we just went into the studio one day." Did a few riffs and I'm like, alright, you're gonna scream. It took us like 45 minutes to like finally get it out. And when he did it, it was great. And then played with that band for a while. That band died out. And that's when Tiger Flower started. Oh. Um, me and Dean. Uh, Tiger Flowers, me and Dean. And then Jesse and my friend Dan. Played, we played that band for 10 years. Wow. Okay. So I was in that band for 10 years. What what kind what kind of sound did that band have? That was like a mathy, screamy. Okay. You know, metal. I see. I see. Um, noise metal. I don't know, but sure. It was great. It yeah. Was like, I did a lot of tours with those guys. Um, and then at the Tire Flowers, kind of, you know, ten years was a lot, a lot, you know. That's a long time. A long time, time. to be playing a band. Yeah. And then we kind of, that kind of like died out. I started a band with my friend Brian, and we started a band called Lost Becomes. That's a band right now. And How long has that been, band been together? A couple of years. A couple of years? Three or four years now. Yeah. In a band. We actually, actually we, record, we started recording right in the pandemic. Oh, okay, so okay, okay. Around, I think it was 2019, 2020, we started recording. I see. That's when we were recording for the whole thing. Yeah. So that band's still active now. Okay, yeah. sure. And then even that's like hard, like it's like married, working, two kids. Yep. And, you know, playing, still playing rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> my daughter's like, hey, where are you going? Like, I gotta go play rock and roll. Okay, what time are you coming home? Like, oh my god. <laughs> and so getting it from all angles. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. And, uh, wow, um, and Henry and Gary, you all haven't.
have played in anything else after Blackout. Is that right? We did uh, get together and jam yeah, here and there. Jam. To yeah. Yeah. When we could. You know, okay. Go to his rehearsal studio, uh, listen to his jam some of our old songs and some covers and so on yeah. and so forth. Him and I jammed one time randomly. Queens. Queens, you were playing Casey or what you Okay. In Queens, right? Queens, yeah. Oh, okay. I see. We recently talked about doing it again. Yes, yeah. We, we, again, well, life. Well, I was, I was going to ask you if, if Blackout had any plans to come together again or play together anytime Absolutely. soon. Why not? You yeah, just I mean, gotta find the time. Yeah. yeah. Work life balance is always the yeah. you know, the culprit of trying to get together and yeah. making something happen. Sure. But the desire is definitely there. Sure. Um, I still have all my old equipment and well they're a little collecting dust at this point, but I would love to restore <laughs> <Brothers>. it. <laughs> and and um, because I would love to make use of it again. Sure. But even if, if it's not like a full-fledged blown man, maybe a project or something, yeah. uh, I'd be more than open to do something like that. Um, uh, I did kind of want to go back a little sure. bit to uh, the time when we were making our recording with a compilation for either uh, was the Newfound Hope or was the First Amendment recording. Uh -huh. And remember, I think it was uh, when we were doing the recording for World of Lies, and if you remember that, that was when I think we wanted to add a, a solo into that song. And just the night before um, we were going to record, I was we were, me, and, me and him were talking about maybe trying to throw in a solo or a filling or, or whatnot. And I said, uh, I'll try and see what I can come up with. And I remember all day trying to figure out something how to play, and I couldn't for the life of me figure anything out. So I go to sleep that night, and somewhere like 3 o'clock in the morning, like a light bulb goes off. And I jump on my guitar right there, I wake up from the slumber and start jamming and trying to, you know, play this riff in my head. And I was like, that's it. So I took it with me the next day to do the recording. And I remember uh, our time was running out because I kept, you know, making mistakes with the solo or whatever. And just before our time was up, I messed up that one last time. And John was like, you'll have to pay extra you know, if we want to continue on to try to get this, you know, recorded. Otherwise, we can't put it in. And thankfully, Henry, I think he threw in the next uh, 30 or $100 or whatever the case would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually... I probably paid $0. Yeah. <laughs> so I had no money. He actually threw in the extra money to uh, fund that late recording, and I was absolutely able to nail it wow. at that point. And it turned out... Very well. So thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, need thanks <laughs> I need it back. <laughs> With interest. <laughs> With interest. Carry on this day. Can you imagine what the interest is? No, I can't. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so that was actually pretty cool. And um, as a result of that, we were constantly getting compliments for adding that to the song. Yes, and, yes, yes. And even to the point where people couldn't wait to, from what I was told, you know, people were anxious to hear us play it live, and we weren't going to play it yeah. live and pull it off. So it was pretty cool. Um, do any of y'all still have the old, any of the old blackout recordings, whether on cassette tape or, you know, uh, masters, yeah. anything I, like that? I still have the, the, files, right? demo, the demo as well as um, two CDs. Okay. The compilation. Yeah, They're sure. somewhere in my home. Um, and uh, what I'd like to add is a, a, a mutual friend of ours, my friend Joel Sir, um, he came to me one day, last couple of years, and he was really interested on... He's a, he's a music engineer, and he was really interested in taking on a project of trying to restore and maybe remaster yes. uh, some of those songs. So um, he asked me for the, the CDs and the cassette tapes, and using some pretty advanced and technical software, he's been able to bring those recordings back to life. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe sometime later on, when we throw can... It up, throw it up. Yeah, we'll, we'll share that to the, the masses. Yes. You know? 
So uh, I'll all, speak to all to my twenty of our friends. Wow! Yeah. So shout out to him as well. Um, just just to bring it back a little bit to uh, like the the peak years of Blackout. Um, why don't you all talk a little bit about like the songwriting process? I mean, I know Joe and and David when the short time they were a part of the band contributed to the songwriting, but what about after them or how did you adapt their song, the, the songs they'd written um, to your own playing and, and all of that? I wrote any songs. I think we had about a total of about six, six or seven yeah. songs. Okay. Songs. Six or seven, okay. Six or seven songs all together. The lifespan of the band was what? Two, three years. Two, three years. Um, we did yeah. a lot of those years. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, we did a lot of shows, but I don't, we could maybe, we didn't get to record. We didn't, yeah. Uh, we didn't put enough effort or energy into making more songs. Sure. Back then. And, and I guess we kept playing shows. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, That's true. Yeah. Because yeah. like, like, you all weren't recording a full length stuck, or anything yeah, to write I songs. Stuck yeah. Into that, that, um, that cycle of oh, we got a show coming up. Oh, we got to be tight. We gotta yep. Play. Let's, let's write a new song. The same ah, six, okay, seven okay, songs. Yep. So we gotta, we gotta get ready. Get ready for you know, sure. Which is a terrible show. thing, you know, but it happens to a lot of bands. Yeah, yeah. Especially back then, you know. Yeah, we were just you know, scratching the surface. Yep. You know, with the scene. Um, I think most of the song structure that we had in, in the beginning started off with writing the riffs first, sure. and adding the lyrics later. Right. You know, so that helped make the process a lot smoother. Rather sure. Than the reverse. You know? Sure. And I wrote one song, that M.I.A. song. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But it was almost like a rip off, and like when I, when I think about it, it was a rip off of the trail, like the, the fingering. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember, but like, you know, like two, three, four, two, three, four. Like it was similar to another riff. So I just remember when I when I did write, I was like, man, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is, well, it was, you know, but it was, it was, it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we never we're, recorded it. No, no. It's probably like one song. I have it on the cassette. Yeah, so yeah. I was just going to say, yeah. yeah. I oh, see. The, the, the live, the live, uh, I have a live version of it. Yeah, I think it was a uh, upstating or something like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably should have wrote something in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's five minutes. I do have it. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. Wow. Um, to find a radio with yeah, yeah, yeah. I still have it. I still have it. Yeah. We, we got some of the historical society, too. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Relics. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, and as far as like the lyrics to Blackout songs went, how, how would the writing of those lyrics go? Who, who was responsible for the lyrics? Um, well, yeah. Joe. Joe wrote the lyrics. Joe wrote. Okay. Okay, okay, yeah. Which he kind of left with me take, take like over. some lyrics or some of it I couldn't really get. Or like you some, couldn't read I his writing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think I just, yeah, I kind of like threw some more lyrics in there. You know, they were pretty simple. Yeah, sure. I think it was with uh, Army of One, I think we needed uh, help to fill in either riffs or maybe even some, some lyrics. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 and that, that too. And I think um, we were stuck in the part of the the main, I guess, rhythm riff, and I, I helped you fill in that area that we were stuck in. Yes. And I think adding a few pieces of lyrics in that song. Yeah. Uh, it's always like the, the later part of the song. Like the that's, the same. that's as far as my regular song. Sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Ramon helped us uh, with recording in da on Danger Zone. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. 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 He was wow. in that recording as well, so yeah. Ramon, thank you again. Ramon was a part of that. I know. Yeah, he was a part of that. Thank you, Ramon. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And Danger Zone was one of them. That's one of the ones. Danger Zone, Betrayal, MIA, all of those songs. Okay. I yeah. Think there was one other song. Uh, there was another one. There was one song. One, we didn't do it. We would have recorded it. Yeah. Uh, we would have had. 
sorts of deep down below. Wait <laughs> 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 till it surfaces. That's not exactly. Oh, so look at that. Am I am I am I excited with you? Please. Oh. So there, there might be one other blackout song. You can't think of the name. Yeah. 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 Um, so there's a, a a question that I always have been asking at the end of these oral histories. But before I get to that, are there other things that any of you all would like to add, whether to blackout or you know to uh, you know anything after blackout or the future of blackout? Anything else you'd like to add before we do the final question? Um, hopefully we can get together and jam and put those songs on the internet mm -hmm. for anyone that's curious to know yeah. what these old guys used to do before, <laughs> before, uh, before the internet, it. before, you know, all these bands yeah. blew up. Yeah. Yeah. I have a very easy you know, influence for any new and upcoming band. Yeah. You know? So yeah. that would be pretty cool, you know, if we can contribute somehow, some way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is the late 90s. Yeah. Uh-huh. Crazy. Uh -huh. It's always fun playing with these guys. Have a show. Uh, who minds jumping back on the guitar and going to a studio and just yeah. hit that guitar roll. You know? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's see. So, the final question I have for all of you is... Um, is there such a thing as like a Bronx metal or Bronx heavy sound? Um, the answer could be no. Uh, if, if you think it's yes, you know, talk about that sound. Or if it's not a sound, you know, maybe it's a feeling or something else. Um, talk about if there's a distinctive thing that makes, you know, Bronx metal or Bronx heavy, Bronx hardcore sound um, stick out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just yeah. playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think um, for the most part, it's a very uh, unique sound. Everyone has their own sound. That's, Are we still recording? Sure. Yeah. Oh, you're still recording. Yeah. Cut that part off. Yeah. Um, very unique uh, during that period. Um, when I think of, I mean, I just think of Irate. Mm -hmm. I think of all those bands. Yeah. Fortamentus. Like you said, Hellbound. You brought back memories. Yeah. I, I remember all those bands. Is there a sound? There's definitely a, a feeling. Yeah. Definitely a vibe. Like a, you know, community. I love all those guys. Like we just we, like if I see any of those guys on the street, even like when we saw Phil and Mudley, it's like man, it's like oh, it brings me back. Like yeah, absolutely. Like just love hanging out with all those guys. Like playing shows, it was just such good times. There was not one. Bad memories that I have yeah. at least of being around all those bands. Yeah, it was, it was so. Is there a sound? I don't, I don't know, but it's definitely like a. I just get a feeling when I'm around all those guys. It's yeah, like family. Yeah, you know. You know? I think it was just like, the shared experience that we all yeah. had uh, playing, uh, you know, uh, metal music, and you know, playing, you know, different. Um, aspects of it, you know, whether it's a combined between like thrash, hardcore, speed metal, death metal, and all that stuff. Um, and uh, we all shared a piece of that. Um, and we created our own unique sound. Yeah. And it was iconic yeah. and very recognizing the moment you heard it. Um, and that was a mutual thing that we all had uh, during that period. It was instantly recognizable if anyone from the local scene heard it. Yeah. They were like, that's irate, that's DDH. Uh -huh. And they were all it's such good out. bands. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know? It's like back then, mm -hmm. those days, they were all such good bands. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Everyone had. I used to love Driven by Hatred. When that guy would start singing. Yeah, yeah. I, I was bumped. 451. Those guys are trying right. to District, District, nine. District Nine. Oh man, they—they they, I don't know, seeing them play with Malali and the stage presence that they had was ripping. I remember, I remember just... being at the first Billy Club Sandwich show. Oh, oh my God. wow! And I want to say it was at the Spiral. Mm -hmm. 
maybe that was the second show, first or second show. Yeah, yeah. At yeah. The Spiral, and and I just remember Barry always being Gordon Menzies, so I was like, kind of, it was kind of weird mm-hmm. for me to see him playing in a hardcore band. Right. So, but then it just it sounded so good. Oh yeah, yeah. And like, it was different. And I was like, man, this is different, but it's good. Yeah. And again, it's like that feeling of man, and every band just sounded like great, man. So that was like a new sound for me. I felt like Billy Club always had their fucking distinct sound, those yeah. breakdowns with the guitar still going. That's right. And I was like, man. And Mar- Martin's Martin. just on another level. Martin, yeah. yeah. You know? like, and Martin just knows how to get a crowd going. Yeah. 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 Martin can look at look oh, you in man. the eyes and say, "We're gonna dance." dance. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's just fucking. You know, <laughs> you know and, and look out whenever he must. <laughs> yeah, look out. Look out. Yeah, just, I remember looking up to all these guys, man. Like everybody was older around me. Like it was just great, great musicians. You know, like I said, it was like a family. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It was definitely a vibe. Family vibe and all those guys. Yeah, shout outs to uh, uh, all those Billy Clubs and all those guys. Um, they had an awesome sound, awesome stage presence, awesome floor presence, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it was really put, put on, a, a Martin would actually be like, you know, he would put on a really, really good show. Um, he was like a, an act on his own, you know? Yes. So, uh, so shout outs to him on that. Just being a great part of the scene. Yeah. So, really yeah. Awesome. And um, and Will, I it, this just occurred to me, but it's uh, it's a pretty interesting thing to think about. A lot of the Bronx bands now that I think about it, their vocalists, you know, were were standalone vocalists. They didn't play an instrument. You you were doing double duty. Double duty. <laughs> yeah. This guy's talented. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, this is because we didn't have anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two two members out. left within two well, months. This so. guy, this guy, come on, just do it. Just yeah. Do it. Okay. Yeah. Do it. The drums, the bass, any guitar. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm not that good, but. Figure something out. Uh, yeah. I mean, and my lyrics weren't mind blowing either. It was kind of just like I would kind of like follow the pattern of the music. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I was like, shit, I got to do this song. So it would be like a lot of rah, 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 rah. Like, <laughs> Wherever I could squeeze lyrics in, I would. Right. You know? But Darnett, to his credit, during his time of playing a bass with us, yeah. one of the unique things about Will's playing was he was like doing finger, finger style and slapping and all that, and he was he was all over the place yeah. on his bass. Yeah. And I used to let practice a lot more back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So much these days. And he, you know, he definitely added so much color to our sound. Yeah. You know, where most, a lot of bands out, you know, out there, they were basically mimicking, you know, the guitar sound. That's up, right. But, and not, you know, doing anything extra uh, to add a unique sound to make it stand out. Sure. Um, Will, uh, Will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Come on. That's yeah. Try to combine Will and Bass at the same time. Uh, you get Will. <laughs> 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 well, I, played it, I was playing in Proof of Purchase for a little while too. Oh, so oh you were in Proof of Purchase for a little while too, huh? I just filled in. I uh, see, I see, I see. Pregnant. And I used to hang out with all those guys like uh, on the pile. Uh, and Marty, I mean, I was in a relationship with the sister for a while. Uh huh. So oh, was shit. Long time, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, you know, like, in the, like I said, a family. Yeah. Everybody knew everybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So it was cool. And then Gigi was a giant piece of cake. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And she became a drum monster of a drummer. Worldwide yes. drummer. <laughs> oh, rehearsed hours and hours and hours. I've never seen somebody play drums so much in my life. <laughs> <laughs> She's a monster. Wow. Phenomenal drummer. Well, is, is there anything else you all would like to add in closing? 
Well, first and foremost, we do this we didn't thank you and the Historical yes. Society for My pleasure. You know, taking on this project and allowing us to be a part of it. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. So, hopefully, uh, we'll do something soon. Yeah. We'll surprise everybody. And I hope so. There's still time. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, thank thank you all so much, uh, Henry. You you want to say anything else? Hopefully, we can record something. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you.